Hey Warriors, it's Coach Josh. Today's Thursday workout. We're going to crush some legs. We're going to do some real fun stuff today with speed squats and some uh, lunges and glute bridge variations. The message for today, the story for today is the tortoise and the hare. Now you may say, hey, I heard this fable. I get it. Slow and steady wins the race. But there's some other aspects to the story that I want to focus on today. And the, 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 the times when we don't really realize we're being the hare and the times we don't really realize that we're being the tortoise. Now remember, the tortoise was audacious enough to think that he could beat the hare in a race. The tortoise was confident in his work ethic. The, the tortoise was uh, okay with being the underdog, was with okay being the perceived disadvantage, was okay with uh, the pressure and uh, the, the odds being stacked against him. The hare was doing something that he thought was gonna be easy. The hare was a sprinter, and the, the hare was focused on the heroic effort over the daily incremental input, and the hare was uh, underestimating his opponent and overestimating his own abilities. And one of the things that occurs in the course of this narrative is that the hare sleeps on the tortoise, literally, like goes to sleep in the middle of the race, thinking that the, the hare's exceptional prowess, the exceptional talent and ability would allow it to, over, to overcome the tortoise's incremental application Allow, the, allow it to overcome the tortoise's in, incremental application uh, by smashing through at the last minute and delivering ex exceptional results. And I think it's so important because the tortoise to me represents preparation. Are you pre pre preparing for the small task that you're going to deliver that day? Uh, it represents consistency. The tortoise is showing up and doing what it can do consistently. Tortoise is, uh, you know, uh, show, uh, unproven, coming into a new space, a new. It's got tor tortoise represents courage, and 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 bravery in doing something new outside of its comfort zone. And the hare is, to me, indicative of when I over rely on natural talent and I don't appreciate the process of preparation, of learning, of education, of sharpening the sword, and. When I, for some reason, believe that I can sprint to the finish line and get first place, even though I, did, I was unwilling to take consistent steps over the duration to achieve that goal. So the hare is, you know, a, a trope in modern times, but there's a lot of, of built-in lessons to that that I hope we're all taking to heart as we focus on our incremental effort consistently on a daily basis with the, with the mental, physical, and financial recovery of Portland, of Oregon, of the West Coast, of the United States. We're going to continue down that track today while we develop some lower body strength. So first up, we are going to do a lot of leg work today. So we're going to open up our hips, open up our legs, and we're going to begin with my favorite and yours, the couch stretch. The couch stretch doesn't literally need to be done on a couch, but it always, it always works. So here I am, taking a step down, kneeling on the ground. My foot is braced up on the back of the couch, or the floor in this case. My other leg, my other knee, my foot's pushing straight down into the floor, so I'm creating tension, opening up that hip, flattening out that pelvis, really doing some, uh, some good, stretching the front side of that leg. Breathing into it, flexing and relaxing the glutes on the right side here, opening up the hip, flex and relax. We're gonna flex and relax about 10 times, and then we're gonna switch to the other side. Here I am. Set up, pushing through the lead leg, creating that tilt, flexing and relaxing that glute, stretching, pushing into it. 
diving down even more, flattening out that spine, dropping that rib cage, breathing into my belly, relaxing my face, letting that stretch really sink in. Flex and relax the butt cheeks. 10 times the goal, flex, relax, flex, relax, flex, relax, 10 reps. Now we've loosened up the quads. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna repattern. We're gonna focus on changing the relationship between the hip, the lower back, and the, the quads and the glutes. So we're gonna do something called a bird dog. So I'm here. I'm gonna flatten out my spine so I'm not arched up. I'm also not rounded out. I'm neutral and I'm going to push my belly out. So I'm tensing up my gut, but I'm pushing out as I breathe. So I'm breathing here in this position, nice tensing that belly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend and keep that back flat, reaching out with my hip and my arm at the same time. So the goal is not to get the foot way up into the air. The goal is to go straight back, extend that hip without extending that low back too much. Nice and flat. Coming back to the other side. Again, go slow so you can feel yourself moving. You can feel yourself giving away or arching up or kicking too high and really doing too much with the low back. Flat, breathing, braced, out. Flat, breathing, braced, out. So we're going 10 per side. Then we're going to, now that we've repatterned our, our belly, We're gonna come over to the weights. So, don't need a bunch of heavy weights at home. Whatever you have is fine because we're just warming up some movement patterns. And um, we're gonna start with a, uh, the hinge. So I'm going to keep that belly tight, drop my rib cage, reach my butt back, bend the knees, drive my butt forward, and I'm gonna exhale as I do it. Breathing out. So I'm gonna do three reps here. And then I'm gonna squeeze my weight. Translate this into three goblet squats. Crushing that dumbbell, back is flat, feet are shoulder width apart. Pulling myself down into the floor, driving up. Two, three. Yes. So doing my three reps of each, we're gonna cycle through that for a total of nine reps total. We're gonna to do three sets of three back and forth. Hinge, squat, hinge, squat, or Romanian deadlift, squat. It can get heavier. So if you're only using one dumbbell, you can grab two. Power through again. Back is flat, driving your butt back, moving forward, pow, up, rib cage down, one, two, three. So having some fun with that. And then if you're, if you're trying to make it difficult, use the heaviest weight you have. If you don't have heavy weight, that's okay. You can add another rep or two. We're just trying to prime that movement pattern. If you really want to get crisp with these, going right back into it. Boom. 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 And then drop them down. One, two, three. So, We've corrected our movement patterns. We've primed them. Now we're going to speed them up. So that gonna, that's gonna lead us right into our first superset. We're gonna do speed squats and front squats. So 
what we're trying to do here is ramp up our nervous system in this pattern by increasing the rate of force production and then giving ourselves a few reps to build some strength. So we're going to go slow on this first one. Uh, this first round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my heel shoulder width and I'm going to create a body weight squat position, dropping my rib cage down, putting tension into my fist. Now I'm going to claw the earth with my toes so that my, the arch of my foot kind of shortens a little bit. And you can see my, as I activate my foot, my knee even starts to tilt out just a hair. And then I'm going to pull myself down on the floor, stand up quickly. So I'm going to come down, pow, down, pow, down, pow, down, pow. And so I'm going as deep as I can, coming up as fast as I can. We're going to do five reps. <sighs> Cracking that walnut in the butt cheeks on the way up. Then you're going to do a dumbbell front squat. So there's a couple of ways to do this. We're going to start with the easiest way. You're going to grab your dumbbell. You're going to put it on your chest. You're going to elevate the elbows. Then you're going to do eight squats. So I'm climbing the earth with my feet, shortening that foot, creating that tension, dropping down. One. Two. Elbows stay up. So my rib cage is down, but my elbows come up. That creates some upper back tension, which is great. Keeping me in that vertical front squat position. Four. This is not a speed squat. Five. I was kind of going fast just because I was getting excited. Six. Seven. Eight. So. We're going to do five speed squats, and then we're going to do eight front squats. So I'll show you how to do them more difficult or more effective as we go, but you don't have to have a lot of weight. You just have to have patience to create that time under tension. So we're going to rest a little bit, and then we're going to do our, our uh, second set. And the fourth round, we're going to have some fun and we're going to AMRAP it. We're going to burn it out. But for right now, going back to our speed squats. So if these are easy, you're able to go pretty fast. Go ahead and grab a weight. Hopefully it's fairly light to you. And you could do speed squats with weight so long as you're quick. Rib cage down, claw on the earth with your feet. Down, one. Down, two. Three. Four. Five. Nice. There's a reason why we limit the rep scheme so that we don't slow down while we do it. Fast down, fast up. Powering up, rubber band like. Then we're going to go into the dumbbell front squat. So you saw me do the double or the single dumbbell. You could do that. And you could stick with that if that was challenging. If you want to try a little bit harder, you have two dumbbells. You can kick it up to your shoulders. Now I'm going to go through. Same exact process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so a little bit more challenging with a little extra weight. But if you don't have any extra weight at home, that's fine. What you can do is slow the tempo down on the way down. Keep it fast on the way up, but go two, three seconds on the way down and then explode up. So speed squats, front squats. That was two rounds. We're gonna do two more. On this one, I'm going to go as quick as I can with the execution of the reps. My nervous system's a little more warmed up right now. So I'm going to fire it up. Then I'm going to head into the dumbbell front squat. And then I'm going to try and control the tempo a little bit to get a little bit more out of it, a little bit more juice out of those eight reps. So this is the third set. And this is the last standard set we'll do. We're going to have some fun on the next round. So 
We've got our uh, speed squats coming up. I'm gonna grab it. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker on this, crushing that dumbbell. And I'm gonna pull myself down into the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Really focusing on neutral spine, power, feeling that tension in the legs. Then, go into that front rack position. Here I am. Here I am. Ba, ba, rock you like a hurricane. Just like singing. Okay, I'm gonna slow this one down. So we're here. Feet, same, same position, shoulder width apart. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, one. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 2, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3, 1,000, 2,000, 4, 1,000, 2,000, 5, 1,000, 2,000, 6, 1,000, 2,000, 7, 1,000, 2,000, 8, whew, okay. So, a little bit of tempo goes a long way. Having a lot of fun with that. On this next round, we're gonna do five reps of the speed squat. We're gonna follow that up with an AMRAP of goblet squats. So, as many reps as possible. What does that mean? As many reps as possible with good form. So, I'm doing this on video. Obviously, I'm not gonna to wanna to show everybody crappy form. So, I'm going to get in a comfortable position. And I'm gonna hammer out as many good reps as I can. And we'll review the tape later to see if my ability to gauge on my own technique has changed, it's gotten better or gotten worse. So, coming up on our last set. So here we are. <clears throat> Speed squats, goblet squat. And I, I picked the goblet squat because it's, it's a stable position. It doesn't require that technical spot there, a technical application of the front rack. Squeezing, everything's tight. But one, two, three, four, five. Okay, nice and fast. So, got that speed. Now comes the AMRAP. So, I'm gonna choose, instead of the uh, front rack position, because we might be here for a few reps, I'm gonna do a different sort of a modified rack. But I can still consider this a very vertical squat, so I can call it a front squat. And all I'm gonna do is just have my palms facing me, forearms vertical. Now I'm gonna head off into the AMRAP. One, two, three, not too fast, not too slow either. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, keep that foot strong, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 8, ah! okay, could have gone to 40 or beyond, but I was shaking, so form wins, not the ego, we'll see if those were any good, 
we'll look at the, at the tape once this is over. Okay. Heart rates are up now. That's okay. Glute bridge, reverse lunge with that front rack position. So here I am, getting out my pad for my lunges. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna superset two exercises. Reverse lunge and the glute bridge. The bridge will be here. So back is flat, bridging up, got my weights here, pushing through the palm of my foot. I'm gonna do 10 reps. Five. Not really resting on the ground. Go right back into it. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ten reps there. Then I'm going to get on my lunge, which will be right here. So we got a pad on the ground so I can reach to it with my knee in that front rack position from the side. Here's what I'm looking like. This is hard. Up, back, one, two, three, elbows stay up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're doing all the reps on one side so that you get a metabolic effect, stressing out that muscle a little bit more because we don't have the weight that we'd normally do that would allow us to get the little heavy reps that would necessitate or benefit from an alternating rep scheme. So we're gonna go right into the next set. We're gonna do four rounds of these. Better get going. So, on my back. One, I'm in. Not touching the ground. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and yes. All right. Here we go. Lined up. Enough stalling. Enough putting it off. Going back. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Two rounds, getting better at these. Now, if you wanna do more weight, more reps, you can add them in to get more challenge out of it. Remember, technique first. As I go into round three, really worried about how my glutes and abs work together. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I missed a couple in there, so I'll hammer them out now. All right, ten bridges, twelve. Reverse lunges. Here we are. Again, all in the same leg. Making them look good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, one more set in this round for the circuit. So, we've really been working the posterior chain, hamstrings. Glutes, back and forth, hamstrings, glutes. We're gonna do some more posterior chain after this. We're gonna get the calves and the hamstrings directly. But as you can see, you're also conditioning your heart. Heart rate is up. We're gonna be getting better at those primary movement patterns. But man, a lot of, it's a lot of work, physical work. So let's finish strong. Last set. One, two, not resting on the ground. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. Last rep. Coming back up. Okay, here I am. Starting with that right leg as the lead leg, all my weight coming into that lead leg. Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Okay. Grab some water. We're going to go right into a very potent hamstring drill. For this, you're going to need a slippery surface. And you can either put paper plates on carpet, sometimes even socks on carpet, or if you have hardwood floors, you can use your socks directly on the hardwood floor. I have a towel on a polished concrete floor that's gonna allow me to slide in and out. Speaking of which, here's what we're doing. So the goal is to get 10 reps per leg with your hamstring curl. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with my weak leg and then I'm going to match what I can do with my weak leg. So my left leg is gonna go first and then if I can get 10 good reps in, great. If it starts to cramp, I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna match it with my strong leg and then I'm gonna edge it up, see if we can work stronger, create some increased capacity there. And then I'm gonna go transition to the calf raise, which I'll show you in a second. But here we are. I'm on the ground. I'm gonna place one foot on the towel. The other foot's gonna be in the air keep from helping me directly, but indirectly I'm gonna be pushing into the ground, keeping my hips up off the ground. I'm gonna curl in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. That's about all I could do without pain. So I'm switching over to the other foot and I'm gonna match it. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Ha. Huh. All right, now we're having some real fun. Getting my weights. For the calf raises, we're gonna do a simple rocking back and forth. I'm gonna rock onto my heels. I'm gonna rock onto my toes. And as I push up, you might notice this too, my knees wanna buckle out. Well, that's the way our ankles kinda of wanna roll. So we're gonna focus on the inside of the foot. And as you do that, you'll notice you might get a cramp, but it's kinda of challenging to use your feet and calves in this way. So take some extra energy and attention. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So, 15 reps of the calf raise, and then you're gonna go back into the hamstring curl without a lot of rest. So it's challenging, for sure. It's hugely challenging. That is the point of training, to challenge ourselves. So here we go. I'm on my back. Last time I got eight, I started to feel some crampingness, pain. So if you're doing these, and your hamstrings bothered, you could do double leg hamstring curls. So it's just both feet at the same time. 
one, two, and so on. Okay, I'm going. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, wow it's the eighth one that really gets me. Trying to be, trying to be productive, not destructive, with the training. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Oh. Phrases. Man, those hamstrings really get you. But then again, so does everything when you do it right. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Foot cramp. Really got to work on these guys. All right, third set. And then we get to do some abs, which feels like a treat after all those calves and hamstrings we've been doing. Okay, go for 10 reps on this one. See if I can't shoot, but again, I'm gonna let pain be my guide. Focus on what I can do well. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, ten. Ha. Okay, just need a little hamstring warm up, is all apparently. Let's do this hamstring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Ah, yes. So much fun. Back to the calves. I'm a little dizzy from getting up too fast. Certainly not from any of this training. Okay. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pressure on the inside, Josh. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so for the finale, we're gonna do some good abs, good, as opposed to some bad abs. So we did some dead bugs in our warm up. Now we're gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna do some dead bugs to practice, and then we're gonna do trying a more advanced version from the plank. So it's gonna require strength and stability of the core to get it done, but if you can pull it off, it's pretty cool. Then the toe touches for good old fashioned ab burn. You could even use your weights with that too. I'll show you how to do that. But 
to begin with, we're going to do some dead bugs. And remember the goal of the dead bug is the same goal of the plank arm and leg lift that we're about to do. Just keep the back flat and your core under control. So pressure in the belly, flattening out that back, reaching out. So this is easy now compared to what I've been doing. Reaching out. So we're just getting some practice, pulling that rib cage down, pushing out with the belly. Then we're going to do a plank and arm, arm and leg lift. So we're going to lift up one arm and keep the back flat and one leg and keep the back flat. So what we're going to do is we're here in the high plank. So back is flat, back is flat, back is flat, back is flat. That's one. Back is flat, back is flat, back is flat, back is flat. That's two. Back is flat, back is flat, back is flat, back is flat. That's three. Back is flat. Almost lost it there. Back is flat. Four. Back is flat. Back is flat. Back is flat. Back is flat. That was five. So, core stability being the name of the game. Doing that every day. Or, uh, sorry, every, every exercise. Then we're having a toe touch. First time through, I'm just going to do a simple toe touch on my back here. Up, 10 reps, one, two, three. Notice I'm trying to touch my toes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right. So you're there. That was one round. Second round, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go three rounds to this. It's all about mental concentration here. Dead bugs. Controlling that belly, controlling that spine. the uh, dead bug going right into the plank arm and leg lift. Again, five circuit circuits. Back is flat. Whew. I say that so I can never forget what the purpose of the drill is. The purpose of the drill is to get better at core control. It happens to be an excruciating lower body and upper body workout, but we have to get better at controlling that pillar so we can stay strong in a variety of positions. This is the third round, third circle. Ha, ha, ah. This is the fourth round. Ha, 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 ha. And that was five. Toe touch. So if you want to use your weight, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, 
10. All right. Last set, best set. Here we go. <clears throat> Man, this training certainly is tiring. Get around the dead bug. One, focusing on that flat back, active belly. Two, three, Four, five, let's find, oh, this is the fun one, let's burn it up. Okay, push it through the pinkies, glutes on, and we're staying tight. One, yeah, getting strong. Core control. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh. Oh. Back. Onto my back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah. Woohoo! Okay, time for dessert. So, knee grabs, T spine push ups hamstring with squat, or squat with hamstring bias. Okay. Knee grab. Shoulder blade touch the ground, that's one. I'm throwing my hands forward pulling my knee to my butt, <laughs> using my whole body to go at once. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woohoo! These push-ups. This is for your upper back, the health of your neck and shoulders, and awesome, some awesome guns. Getting those push-ups on. Here I am. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Yeah, baby. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ha. Now, squat hamstring with bias, or squat with hamstring bias, allows us to open up those hamstrings. Given all the work that we've done today, I bet you they're going to be pretty pliable. I'm pretty warm. Let's find out. Heel, shoulder width across. Drop down. Reaching up, inhaling. 
Inhaling, my fingers grab it under my shoes, chin to chest, standing up. It's two. It's three. Four. Yeah. Ha. All right. Well, one thing is for sure, I definitely have gotten more flexible as this quarantine challenge has drawn on over the past few months. So I'm happy to get back into the dojo. I'm happy to lift, lift heavy and sprint once more, but uh, I'm only gonna be able to do that if I continue to do that work. Those small incremental inputs over a long period of time that build up to something great. So I, uh, I implore you to be the tortoise and not only defeat the hare, but bring forth the warrior within. What? You see stuff, I don't hear you. It's like we're deaf to each other. It's like I specifically just don't want to listen to you. <laughs>